Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We bless your name because of the promise you have given us in your word that when we call upon you, you will answer. We are praying that you will answer the prayers of your people here tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that the burdens in their lives, the mountains before them, the difficulties they are presenting before you, you will take everything away in Jesus' name. Amen. But I pray that the faith they have in you will work miracles in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us together tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From the short um, period we have now, we'll just briefly look into the scriptures and see how faith works as I talk to you on strong faith in weak people. If there is any subject in the Bible that ought to take your attention, it is the subject of faith. Many, many people try to study the Bible, they go to the church, they read many parts of the Bible, and they try to get knowledge from the Bible. But one of the greatest things you can learn about in the Bible is about faith. Faith is very essential, very important and indispensable in your life. Because that is the link between you and God through Jesus Christ. As you already know if you've been coming for some time, great are the possibilities of faith. It is through faith that mountains have moved away in your life. It's through faith that sicknesses are healed. It is through faith that evil spirits or demons are cast out. Great miracles always come as a result of exercising great faith. But it's surprising that the people that talk much about faith, I mean asking themselves if they had faith, thinking if they have faith, worrying about their faith, wondering how much faith they have, they are the people that know little about faith. They know least about faith because they think much about it, they talk much about it, and yet they do not understand what it's all about. In the Bible, there are many people that used faith without thinking about faith, without talking about faith. In fact, in the Bible, there are people that never mentioned the word faith, and yet they manifested the greatest kind of faith. That may surprise you at the first thought, and you begin to wonder, how can a person manifest a great faith, and yet never mention the word faith? You see, it's like how we breathe. From the time we were born, we started breathing. Breathing is very, very important very essential, very indispensable in our lives, just like faith. And yet, a little child breathes without thinking about breathing. A little child will breathe without even knowing that he's breathing. A little child will breathe without worrying about breathing, without wondering how breathing takes place. The child does not know whether you are breathing through the nose or you are breathing with the lungs. Which one is more important, you ask the child? Your lungs or your nose? The child doesn't know. Which one is more important in breathing? The throat or the lungs? He doesn't know. In fact, you ask a little child, do you breathe with the heart or you breathe from the lungs? The child will think maybe since um, the heart is very important and breathing is very important, Maybe I'm breathing from the heart. The child doesn't know. And yet, the child is breathing. Even for us who are adults, you breathe without thinking of it. Whenever you begin to think and you become too conscious of breathing, it means you are sick. Because there's a sick man that is having difficulty with breathing that will be thinking about breathing. The adult that is healthy, that is strong, that is alive, he breathes unconsciously. And even while you are sleeping, your breathing continues. A little child will begin to walk. 
without thinking about walking. He doesn't know you call it walking, but he stands up if he's healthy and he begins to walk. And we who are adults, we walk without thinking, I'm going to take my right leg, push it forward now, then take my left leg and push it forward now. The moment you become conscious about your walking, your walking becomes irregular. But it is when you are not thinking about it. Think about the athlete. The athlete that is using his leg and running. And he is not thinking, I am running. Now his mind is blank about running, but he's running. And he's not thinking, which leg am I going to take now? Am I going to take the right leg or the left leg? Am I going to swing my hands to coordinate with my legs? He is not thinking about it and he's doing it well. It's the same with faith. You manifest faith without thinking about it. You exercise faith without thinking about it. And I want you to understand that many times when you are thinking you don't have faith, actually you have faith. It's because you do not know how faith works. I believe that today as you have come, your faith, which you don't know you have, but which you have, that faith will begin to work mightily in your life in Jesus' name. And you know, it takes, um, it takes some time of practicing. That little child that is um, walking, that child will need to practice and practice and practice unconsciously, without knowing that he is practicing, until he begins to walk like an adult. And if you will give the time, every Thursday you come, every Thursday you come, every Thursday you come, your face will be developing, your face will be growing, because it's uh, practicing on the use of your faith and wonderful things will begin to happen in you and through you and as you pray for other people as well in Jesus name Amen. now in the Bible we have a, a lot of people that used their faith without knowing they were using faith think about Jacob mighty faith, great faith, strong faith worked in his life and that man Jacob never mentioned the word faith he was never conscious of it Think about Joshua. Joshua was a man that manifested faith. Great, great, great faith. And yet, he never thought about it. He didn't even know that he was uh, manifesting faith. At the heat of the battle, he would just stand in front and he would look up and say, You son, I am commanding you to stop where you are. And the moon stop where you are. The great manifestation of faith and he never thought about it. I want you to think about uh, the people in the Old Testament like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They never mentioned the word faith. In fact, they didn't know that they were manifesting faith. That uh, wicked man, Nebuchadnezzar, called them and said, I heard that you are not bound unto my idol. Now, if you will bow down when you hear the sound of music, that will be all right for you. If you don't, I will throw you into the fire. And when I throw you into that burning furry furnace, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? You know the answer? They didn't say, Nebuchadnezzar, you go ahead and try it. You will know we have great faith. They didn't know faith. They didn't give a definition of faith. Oh, they just said, Nebuchadnezzar, if you do that, our God whom we serve is able. And then they said something that if you say some preachers will tell you, ah, you have destroyed your faith, you don't have any faith. They said, but if not, if God does not deliver us, oh, people tell you, the moment you use the word not, you, you say, if not, then it means you don't have any faith at all. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had faith. And yet they said, if you do it, Nebuchadnezzar, um, the Lord whom we serve is able. But if not, our God, uh, if he doesn't do it, we still will not bow down to your idol. I want to tell you in your life that many times your heart is full of faith, but your mouth may use the word not, or nothing, or little, or you may say some things out of the head that your heart really does not agree with because in your heart you know that God is able in your heart you know that God will do it 
In your heart, you know that God is all powerful. In your heart, you know that with God, all things are possible. In your heart, you know I'm not going to die. In your heart, you know God is going to heal me. In your heart, you know God is going to answer my prayer. And your head is saying another thing. But in your depth, in the depth of your heart, you know that your God is a great God. That's faith. But you may not know it is faith. You may think, well, I just don't have any faith. And you know that um, Daniel, Daniel prayed. They threw him to the lion's den. And Daniel did not mention the word faith. In fact, he wasn't conscious of exercising faith. And just like you are not conscious of your breathing. And you are breathing all the time. Breathing all the time. And I want to tell you that you as a child of God, you have faith. Even though you are not conscious of it. You as a person that is saying, oh God, I am going to that place. I've heard so much of what you are doing in that place. And I am going there. You may not know that is faith, but that's a great, great faith. On a day like this, you left your house and you say, I'm going to that place. I believe God. Today is my day. This difficulty I have, the doctors, I'm going to tell the doctors a testimony. That's faith. You are saying, this difficulty I have, I will surprise my husband. I'm going to have a testimony. That is faith. Even though you may be weeping on the one hand, saying, oh God, it's taken a long time that I've been in this problem. Yet inside you, deep, deep within you, there is something coming out from your heart saying, I'm going to have my testimony. I'm going to give a testimony. I'm not going to remain like this. That is faith. And God will never disappoint you in Jesus' name. You remember Anna. Anna was a sorrowful woman. You know, you cannot face while you are sorrowful. Some people feel that because I have sorrow, I, I don't have any faith. No, it's not like that, my brother, my sister. You can have sorrow and have faith. You can have tears and have faith. You know, we, while we're weeping, we're breathing. While we're sorrowful, we're breathing. And in the believer's life, a person that is reading the Bible, a person that, will, that is saying, no, I will not kill myself. I know this difficulty is great. I know this, my mountain is very high, but I will not die. I will not die. They seem God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, who has been helping other people. He will help me. Why you are saying that? You are weeping. And some people say, oh, because you are weeping, you are not manifesting faith. Yes, you are manifesting faith. Once you just believe in your heart, God is able. God will do it. God will not disappoint me. You know, Anna was praying. Really praying. A, a woman of sorrowful heart. Bitter heart. A woman that was, you know, so sorrowful. At least were moving. And uh, she was uh, really in sorrow and in suffering. And Eli the priest said, Woman, why are you acting like a drunken man? You know, a woman that was behaving as if she was mental, as if she was mad, as, she, as if she was drunk. You wouldn't think that that woman had faith, but she had faith. Say, no, God and Sammy. Oh God and Sammy. Oh God and Sammy. All the other people, they were rejoicing and drinking and doing other things. But this woman was saying, oh God and Sammy. And Eli said, why are you like this? Oh, she said, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. And uh, Eli said, all right, go your way. Peace be unto you. All that were asking from God, God has done it. And she became cheerful. That is faith. That is faith. You may be weeping, but you have faith in God. Always remember that faith is all, it's like breathing. Natural like breathing. You may not be conscious of it, just like breathing. But your miracle is on the way. And as we are here tonight, I want to assure you, you will get your miracle. No matter what is causing you the tears, no matter what is causing you the sorrow, no matter what the people of the world are saying, no matter what the wicked people of the world are saying, you are going to get your miracle in Jesus' name. I want you to briefly look at Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, from verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Jacob had a problem that has remained in his life 
for more than 20 years. And uh, while he was coming back, from where he had gone to be a stranger, then um, he heard that this problem of 20 years was surfacing again. The problem was still there. He became afraid. My brother, you cannot face what you are afraid. I, I know that uh, what I'm saying may look strange to some of you. I've been studying the Bible for a long, long time. And you are saying, I, I thought if somebody has fear, he doesn't have faith. Well, look at Jacob. Jacob had fear. What, what I'm telling you this, my brother, my sister, is that don't destroy your faith. You may be having fear because of what your eyes are seeing, because of what your ears are hearing. You may be having problem because of the criticism, the opposition of people. And the devil is telling you, because you have that little fear in you, you don't have any faith at all. That's a lie. You have faith in God. You have faith in God. That's why all the time, whenever you have trouble, you go back to the Bible. You are looking for a promise of the Bible. That's faith. That's why you are looking up to God saying, Oh God, I know that this fear is in my life, this problem is in my life, but I know you are there. At least I know that Jesus is my Savior. God is my Father. My brother, my sister, that is faith. As long as that faith is there, the devil will not destroy you in Jesus' name. Amen. And that river will not drown you in Jesus' name. Amen. Very soon, the cloud will clear away. Very soon, the waters will clear away. Very soon, the Red Sea will be parted before you. Very soon, your mountain will remove in Jesus' name. Amen. Very soon, all those bad dreams, all those mountains, all those harassments of the devil, everything will pass away from your life. Uh, but you see, when you, when you, re when you hear that uh, Esau is coming, and he is coming with 400 soldiers, and he wants to destroy you, you know, it's natural to be a little bit afraid. Jacob was, a, was afraid. Very, very afraid. And he started dividing all his uh, people. And he said, well, if Jacob, if Esau will kill this, then he will spare this. If Esau will kill this, then he will spare this. All that time, he was remembering God, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, that God who met me by the way. While he was, you know, remembering the promise of God, the fear was in his heart. While he was remembering the promises of God, he already was sending all those people away. The fear may be there, but the faith is also there deep, deep in the heart. And then he started wrestling with that angel. And the angel said, let me go. For the day breaketh. Ah, he said, you won't go. You won't go. Except you bless me. That blessing is in your hand. God sent you with my blessing. Give me my blessing before you go. That's faith. And you know, you came last Thursday. You came Thursday before. You came the other Thursday. And you are here again. That is faith. That is faith. They introduce our values to you. You say, no, I'm going to deeper life Bible church at Bagada. That is faith. They said, why are you still praying? You have prayed, 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 and prayed, and there is no answer. You say, I will pray once again. That is faith. Sometimes you say, I will not even eat. I want this God to know that I need business. God, you must answer me. That is faith. And so Jacob said, I will not let you go. Except you bless me. And uh, he said unto him, What is thy name? He said, I am Jacob. He said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. You know, the greatest problem of um, Jacob was Esau. The greatest problem of, his, of Jacob was that Esau was bringing 400 people to fight against him. And the angel did not mention the name of Esau. You don't, don't be, don't be uh, discouraged. Oh, the man of God did not mention my problem. If, if he had mentioned my problem, there is a man there who is praying unto God, who is uh, waiting upon the Lord. Your enemy is Esau, and uh, is coming with 400 men. Now you are free. I'll be happy. No, he doesn't always follow. The angel did not mention the name of Esau. The angel did not mention the problem, the real problem. The angel just said, what is your name? And he said, I am Jacob. And the angel said, all right, your name is changed. You are no more Jacob. You are now called by the name Israel. As a priest, you are power with God and with men. With men. With men. 
You understand the meaning of that? The meaning of that is that your enemy you are thinking is one man. But now you have authority over men. Esau, 400 people, 1,000 people, 4,000 people, men in uh, this place, men outside that place, idol worshippers, all men, you now have authority over them. That's greater than what he was praying for. That's greater than what he was looking for. God is going to give you more than you are looking for in Jesus' name. Amen. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And this man said, Ah, tell me your name. He said, Why are you asking me of my name? And you know some people, after you have come, if you're asking God a question, saying, God, tell me this. And the Lord did not tell you. Oh, you will say, maybe it's because I have no faith. No, you have faith. Jacob had faith. But the angel did not answer all his questions. Yet he got a miracle. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. Your life will be preserved. Your life will be protected. God will provide for all your need in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, can I read this testimony from you that came from Ibadan? You have heard that uh, we went for a crusade at Ibadan. Were you here when we gave that report on Sunday? How many of you are here? Can I see your hand? Oh, you are good church people. God bless you. Now, the, after that uh, report we gave you from the crusade at Ibadan, more testimonies have been coming in and uh, God is doing wonderful things and I'm believing God God who has done it for all these people and they are very excited and they are very happy God is going to do much more for you in Jesus name Amen. this uh, person is writing he is a high government official uh, from Ibadan and he said uh, dear brother Kumui praise the Lord hallelujah God has removed the cancer that has afflicted my wife in a miraculous way. God visited us as he visited the doctor with affected kidney, which uh, you told myself and my wife. What happened is that this uh, husband and wife, they went to the hospital on Thursday, the last day of uh, the great miracle crusade at Ibadan. And the doctor tested the wife and the doctor said, your wife has a cancer and it's a very serious sin. And uh, the next Monday, you must come for operation very, very urgently. You cannot wait now because it's very, very delicate and uh, it's a terminal disease. From there, from that Thursday, uh, from the hospital, UCH, they came to the uh, crusade that Thursday on the 25th of September, just this last month. And then we prayed for the people that were sick. On Friday, we had an FL program, and they came. On Saturday, then they came to see me. While I was um, counseling, this husband and wife came. Very, very sorrowful. Very, very sorrowful. And they told me the whole story about the cancer, about the operation. The doctors have said they should come on Monday for that operation. And then I told them the... Um, testimony of the doctor that gave testimony here, I said God is still at work after that testimony I prayed for them the UCH, I'm now reading the letter, the UCH uh, surgery uh, department had prepared my wife for surgery on Monday 29th of September after a lump has been discovered in her breast because after I prayed for them that Saturday, I said they can still go to the hospital that uh, they shouldn't tell the doctor anything let the doctor tell them something but they should go so they went there, they were quiet and they prepared the theater they prepared all the you know, operation table and everything and they said now woman time has come come and uh, come for the operation and she got there you prayed for us on Saturday 27th uh, of September 1986 the lump said to be said to be cancer had been detected on Thursday, 25th of September at 10 a.m. We wept bitterly, but attended the last uh, crusade at the Liberty Stadium on that day. Surprisingly, my wife reported for the operation on Monday, 29th of September. On getting to the theater at 8 a.m. on Monday, ready for the operation, 
the doctor who was to perform the operation could not see what to operate. They prepared the theater, they prepared everything. And then she got there now and said, I have come. And so they tested her again. They said, what happened to you? Then they said, wait. They went to call another doctor. That doctor the first doctor did not tell the second doctor what. He uh, just said, uh, this uh, woman is due for operation. Help me examine her. That second doctor examined her. There was nothing. Then they called the third doctor. They didn't tell the third doctor what the other two doctors had seen. They said, please examine this woman. He examined her. There was nothing. They called the fourth doctor. Uh, they didn't tell the fourth doctor what happened, uh, you know, with the other three doctors. When that one examined her and said, uh, what's the matter with this woman? There is uh, nothing. Then they called the professor. That's in charge of all the... That's the... He said... He invited other colleagues, including the head of department of surgery, uh, that's uh, Professor, they mentioned his name, to witness the mystery. And then, after they had shown the surprise, they said, come back next Friday. Because they said it's a mystery. Then she went back the following Friday, they examined her again. When the clone discovered it, they said, woman, go to your house, we don't understand, it's a mystery. And uh, this man wrote and said, I know and believe God, he has performed a miracle. The glory according to his letter, the glory is no longer for the doctors at UCH, but the glory is to God Almighty. Then he ended the letter by saying, I am already now a member of the church at Ibadan. <laughs> Our God is a wonderful God. They, they came from Ibadan, the pastor and, the, and one permanent secretary. And uh, while they were, I said, um, we had given the report here on a Sunday as to the things that God did at Ibadan. Then the pastor said, ah, oh, the report you have given is a small thing. And then I said, what do you mean? Then he started telling me things that before that crusade at Ibadan, there were uh, people sitting on wheelchair at, in the church. You know, they'll bring them to the church on wheelchair. And uh, the pastor was telling me, Now you, you think that woman doesn't have faith? Who has been coming to Deeper Life Church on wheelchair? And she kept coming, 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 and coming all the time. And yet, she will come on wheelchair. Don't be ashamed. Whether you are coming on wheelchair or you are coming with sticks, or you are coming somebody helping you, or the problem is still there, as long as you still keep, keep coming, that is faith in God. God is going to honor that faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the pastor at Ibano told me that now after the crusade, they, they couldn't find any wheelchair in their church anymore. That God had totally removed that thing. While I was smiling, I was saying, praise the Lord. The pastor said, I have not told you everything. There's another one. I said, what is that? They said, there was a man that came for the crusade. He had hunchback. You know what they call hunchback? At the same time, he was lame. And um, you think of the double problem of lameness and hunchback. And while I was praying, that man was seated amidst the covered seats where they put their VIP. And uh, while I was praying, I didn't pray for the hunchback. I only prayed for the lameness. And then I said, now God has taught you, stand up where you are if you are lame. That man that was lame stood up as the people looked up, praising God and clapping. They looked at the hunchback, they couldn't see the hunchback again. The hunchback had gone, the lameness had gone. Our God is a powerful God. I want to assure you, there is faith in you. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that this God is your God. And God who has done it for other people, He will do it for you. That is faith. That is faith. And you are going to manifest that faith. You are going to exercise that faith. And God is going to touch you miraculously tonight in Jesus' name. I want you to rise up and we pray together. I want you to tell the Lord whatever you need. There is no mountain too big for God to remove. There is no difficulty too big for God to remove. There is no sickness too, too hard for God to heal. There is no cancer too hard for God to operate. There is no barrenness that is too hard for God to remove. 
there is no poverty that is too God too high for God to remove. God will answer your prayer. He loves you. He loves you. And as you keep coming, as you keep coming, that is the manifestation of faith. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. He loves you. He loves you. And he's going to answer your prayer. He is going to answer your prayer. He is going to answer your prayer. Amen. Do you believe in miracles? Do you really believe in miracles? Do you know that your God is still alive? That mountain before you cannot remain in Jesus' name. That problem in your life will vanish away in Jesus' name. I want you to say, I believe in miracles. Say it again. Say it again. My miracle is on the way. My miracle is on the way. My miracle is on the way. I want your eyes bowed and your eyes closed. That woman that the devil has been telling you to commit suicide and say, the devil has been saying there is nothing that remains for you in life. And it's moved you to commit suicide. And uh, you were so tempted, you went to the kitchen, you wanted to turn on the gas. But eventually you changed your mind and you said, I'll wait some moment more. I'll wait some moment more. The Lord wants me to tell you that that thing you are so full about is a small thing in the sight of the Lord. The Lord is telling, I've never said this, but the Lord is telling me to say to you now that the Lord will remove your problem as easy as it is for you to kill a mosquito. That that problem is like a mosquito before him. And he's going to kill that mosquito in Jesus' name. That woman that is there, you've attempted suicide. Uh, if you just raise up your hand, it's bad and eyes closed. The Lord is saying he's delivering you right now. Delivering you right now. I want to see you. I want you to, I want you to raise up your hand if that's the person I'm talking about. That you felt so tempted, you went to the kitchen feeling tempted to turn on the gas and, you know, just to kill off yourself. But the Lord is saying your problem is like killing a mosquito and he's going to remove that mosquito. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand and wave it at me and let me see you? Will the person wave the, oh yes, God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against that mountain. I come against that problem. I come against that harassment of the devil. And I command you, mountain, in the life of that person, come out in Jesus' name. All those evil spirits that are harassing that woman, tormenting that woman, wanting to kill that woman, I command you to leave that woman alone from now on in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that that miracle will come upon her life right now. I pray that the deliverance will come upon her life right now. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The one that is uh, terribly in debt and it appears so uh, you are finding out you'll be able to run away from people because uh, you are in debt to this one, you are in debt to that one. And you are praying to God because you don't know when you'll meet any one of them. If you raise up your hand, the Lord is saying, He will clear the debt away from you, for you this very year. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray for all these people who are in debt. Lord, I pray that whatever the debt may be, whatever the amount, miraculously, 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 you'll clear away that debt from them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray that you'll provide for all their needs. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. That man with a family of a wife and children that has owed uh, for more than seven months, and you are now being harassed and being, uh, uh, no, don't know what, what to use, that they want to eject you and just make you to leave that place. And you have been going up and down. You've gone to about two or three friends to lend you money. They say they are sorry they don't have anything. And you are wondering. You don't sleep at night because you say, what am I going to do? If they drive me out of this place with a wife and children, if you raise up your hand, the Lord says, they will open the windows of heaven. And it will pour a blessing upon you. And you will not be a debtor anymore. You will become a lender in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I'm looking for that person to raise up his hand right now, family man. You've owed the money for more than seven months and they are troubling you. You are feeling ashamed. Don't feel ashamed anymore. The Lord Almighty is on your side. The God of provision is on your side. Just raise up your hand where you are and let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of, of all supply. You are the God of great provision. Lord, I'm asking for these who are raising up their hands that this debt they are owing for their accommodation miraculously, miraculously, you'll pay for them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I'm asking that you'll send angels of mercy. You'll spend men, you'll send men of compassion. You'll send people of love. And Lord, you'll bless these people miraculously and provide for all their needs in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you'll provide money for food. You'll provide money to pay their debt. You'll provide money to work. Father, I pray that you'll bless them abundantly in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, I pray that you open the windows of heaven. And you do it in such a miraculous way that you'll know this is an answer to prayer. And meet all their needs in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. The woman that um, has that pain in the lower part of the abdomen and it's been very inconveniencing. And uh, once in a while, a thought will come to your mind of operation. You don't know why the thought is coming, but once in a while, this pain is, uh, is there. And once in a while, your heart will think about operation. If you just raise up your hand, the Lord says the problem will be removed right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that that thing that is in that belly will come out in Jesus' name. That pain, oh Lord, I just pray that you remove that pain, you remove that disease from that woman in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. The one that has been told you have a brain damage or brain tumor, something in the brain, if you'll just raise up your hand and lay the other hand on that part of the brain, I'll be praying for you now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you lay your mighty hand upon the brains of these people. And whatever it is, brain damage or brain tumor or disease in the brain, Lord, I pray you'll, de you'll deliver them from that disease right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. The person that has been having that pain on your right side of the ribs, you thought it was pneumonia before, but now because of the persistence of the pain, you don't know what it is again. If you just raise up your hand now, your miracle is on the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that man over there. I pray for all these who are raising up their hands now. Lord, I ask that that pain will not be able to resist the anointing, the power of the Almighty God. Come out in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for that other person too with a problem in the tooth and I pray that that problem in the tooth it will vanish away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that all these people that have come here today expecting a miracle from you, you give them that miracle right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. They have said um, publicly that the arrangement will not continue. But there is somebody there, you are hearing information secretly in your place of work. That appears that um, even though they have said publicly that there is no retrenchment again, that uh, they are trying to get you out of that place. And you try to find out um, secretly whether this is true or not. And you've not been able to make head or tail. But the fear is there that these people want to just push you out of that place you are working. If you are there, you raise up your hand. I'm telling you that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And what God has given you, no man can take it out of your hand. If you are there, you can raise up your hand. I'll be praying for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that individual that the blessing you have given, the work he has, nobody will take it away from him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. The person that has, uh, you know, something, it, it will be sometimes like a hand rubbing pepper on you. And sometimes you feel the movement of uh, so, something rubbing something on you. 
and uh, all over your body something will be paining you and you'll be having the, the peppery sensation. There's another person that you have, it's like ants walking all over in your air and not walking all over your body. All the time you are slapping that part and slapping that part and there is nothing. It's just the maneuvering of the devil. If you raise up your hand, the Lord is saying that the miracle is on the way. There's another person there, you'll be hearing some noise in your ear. Definite noise, clear noise. And the noise is, you know, disturbing you. Many times you look in this direction, look in that direction. Is just the noise of disturbance from the devil. If you raise up your hand, the Lord says he's uh, removing the problem. Another person you have a problem in your nose, uh, you know, inside, and you know the problem is there, and you don't know what you are going to do with it. I think you've gone to the hospital for them to have a checkup on you, and yet nothing has been diagnosed. If you raise up your hand, your miracle is on the way. Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking for all these people right now. That problem is in those I command you. Whatever you are, whatever your source, come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. The person that is having the sensation of ants walking all over and going all over in the air and in the body, I command you right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh Lord, I'm asking for all these people that have that the peppery sensation, something just a uh, demonic force oppressing them, tormenting them. Come out in Jesus' name. Not all these people that you have revealed by the word of knowledge, by your revelation. I pray that your miracle will come upon them right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. The married man that is uh, watching the bed at night, if you'll just um, raise up your hand, married man, married man, watching the eyes closed, heads bowed, married man watching the bed at night, and um, sometimes uh, you yield bold face against your wife, uh, but sometimes you feel the shame and you know something like that. You're a married man, and yet this problem is there. If you'll just raise up your hand while the heads are bowed and the eyes are closed, I'll be praying for you. I'm looking for you before I pray. Raise up the hand and... Okay, God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking right now. That problem, that disease on that man. I command you. Come out of the body in Jesus' name. You devil wanting to destroy the family of that individual because of this loathsome, delicate, de um, serious disease. I command you, remove your hand away from that individual in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'm asking that you lay your mighty healing hand, your mighty miraculous hand upon the urinary tract of that man and you control everything from now on in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. While I was praying, the Lord revealed to me of a person whose bladder had been damaged. Uh, by um, the doctors or in one way or the other and because of the damaged uh, bladder uh, sometimes the urine will be oozing out and uh, you checked up, up in the hospital and they are thinking of you know what to do uh, they made some explanation to you if you raise up your hand there is a miracle awaiting you a person whose bladder has been damaged and you have checked up in the hospital and they are thinking of what they will do for you. If you raise up your hand, your miracle is right here now on the way. I'm waiting for you to just raise up your hand. I tell you to raise up your hand so I will be able to identify you so I know who I'm praying for. That's why. If you raise it up very well, properly, I'll be able to uh, see that you are the person. God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know you are a wonderful God. You are a powerful God. There is nothing that you can do. You can create. You can heal. You can deliver. Even if a person is dead, you can raise the dead. With you all things are possible. Therefore, Lord, I pray that in a miraculous way, you will just perform a creative miracle on the blood of all these people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you'll perform the operation yourself. Lord, I pray you'll perform a creative miracle yourself. 
and you give them the miracle they need and the blood will be perfect in Jesus name Amen. thank you father because I know you have answered in Jesus mighty name I pray the person that has something choking your throat, if you raise up your hand, that thing will clear away. Something choking your throat. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray for those people that the choking in the truth will vanish away in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. That woman that just said now, I hope they will not finish up the thing without praying for me because I came here looking for child. And I hope that they are not going to neglect me. If you just raise up your hand, the Lord says, He has not forgotten you. He knows your need. He knows your life. And He gave a child to Anna. He gave to Rebecca. And He gave also to Rachel. He gave also to Sarah. He gave also to Elizabeth. And the Lord says, He is the same God today. The same God yesterday, today, and forever. And He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all these women that this thing that is called barrenness will never be mentioned in their family anymore in Jesus' name. You disease of barrenness, you are a stranger in that family. You are unwanted in that family. You are not invited in that family. And I command you to pack all your load and go right now in Jesus' name. All the charms, all the evil, all the curse, all the poison upon, the, upon those families. I break everything and put everything under their feet in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray, whatever the reason may be, why these women are barren, whether it is magical or medical, whatever it may be, whether it's coming from the devil or it is natural, I cancel it right now. And I pray that the miraculous hand of God will touch all these women right now. And you give them the miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, I'm asking that as the sun will rise and set without failing, as the moon will come up in the night without failing, and the word of God says that you are the same God from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, that you have never changed. In the same way, I pray that your hand of mercy, your hand of miracle will be upon these women and they will not fail to get what they want in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that this year they will not miss it. Amen. That by, the, by this time next year they will be coming with their babies giving testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that the power of the Almighty will overshadow them. Amen. The Holy Spirit will come upon them. Amen. And everything that needs to be done will be done in their bodies. Amen. And Lord, they will have the children in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, this time I just pray that all the angels of God who are ministering spirits, they will come around them. And every sin, every operation that needs to be made, they will do the operation. They will take the hindrance away from their bodies. And they will have their children in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Whatever other problem you have, if you just lay your hand upon yourself, the Lord is saying that chest pain is going away. The Lord is saying that a problem with the navel of that individual, that that disease, the jam there is vanishing away. The Lord is saying that thing that is smelling, coming out of the nose of that individual there, that that thing will vanish away and uh, from this time to Sunday you will not find that thing anymore. The Lord is uh, telling me to tell you that there is somebody there with a the family breaking up just, uh, just this week and just this past week, that the Lord is putting everything back together again. The Lord is saying there's somebody there with a disease on one of your breasts. The Lord wants me to tell you that you are not going to die. That the thing is removed already by his power in Jesus' name. The person that has pause coming out of a particular place, the Lord is saying he himself is in charge of the situation now. He'll draw away the pause in Jesus' name. The person that has that heat in the head and it will look like the person is getting mental, wanting to run out and just remove the dress, the Lord says he's now in control of the situation. Whatever the problem, just raise up your hand and the Lord is going to deliver you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for all these who have come expecting a miracle from the hand of the Lord. Lord, I pray your power will touch them. Your glory will be upon them. Your spirit will overshadow them. 
that all those things that you have revealed to me are removed. Oh Lord, I pray it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I just pray for these people. In the day, be with them. In the night, be with them. Amen. Will their businesses prosper them? In their families, answer their prayers. Lord, I pray the problem in the head for that individual you evil spirit vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray for that um, person that is coming here for the first time and wondering whether the prayer will be answered or not. Lord, I pray miraculously you drop that miracle upon the body, upon the life of that individual right now in Jesus' name. The ears that are making noise, I command you that noise come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your hand be upon them. Amen. Let your spirit come upon them. Amen. In the night, let them sleep well. Amen. All the oppressions of the devil, I cancel everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray that you preserve the lives of these people. Amen. Give them real life, good life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your power go with everyone as we are going now. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I believe God has answered. I believe God has given you a miracle. God bless you and good night.